Good morning again. My name is Reverend Richard Pacheco and just coming back on a quick video to welcome you to our Sunday service. We are returning to high def as we begin our opening prayer. And so I hope you stay tuned for our lesson today as we move into what is God. Last week we did starting over and friends, hope you got something, hope you did the work. And I'm really excited to get into this topic with you today. So we're here at low tech to move into high tech. So stay tuned as we move into our Join me as we close our eyes and we center into this moment, this time, as we thank this presence that we're in. We know that we have called it Father, Mother, God. We have called it God. We have called it by many names, but it is the goodness and the presence, the love and peace that follows in and through us. It is the part that inspires us when we release the outer world. We let go of all that which is outside noise and go deep within our own silence and quietness where our true truth, our true answers come from. We take that time to say thank you for being divinely guided to being here today. We say thank you for the time for us to have an open heart and open mind so that we may receive the lessons and seek the truth within them and put them into practice. And as we take a moment to breathe in, we know that we see ourselves doing the work and expanding our true selves out, being in loving and support. As the Peaceful Warrior always says, there's nothing much greater than service of others. And it is in service that we are the lights for other people. And we again are so grateful. And we know the work is being done because we say it isn't so it isn't so we let it be as we move into our session knowing that all is well and we affirm this with an ashe somo te vi and amen Our reading today comes from our daily word for today, which is world peace. What better way to serve people around us and the world around us by focusing on world peace. So our word for today is world peace. And our affirmative prayer is, I rest my heart in the peace of God around the world. So many souls are joining me in prayer for peace. While the news may give more attention to the points of conflict, there is striving and yearning in human heart for peace. My prayer supports that desire and strengthens the bonds of our love that lead to greater harmony. I begin my affirmation of world peace with a soft and open heart. I am comforted as I realize the advances the world people have, the world's people have made over the generations and to live together harmoniously. I make an effort to live a more peaceful life and bridge the gaps of understanding between myself and those around me. I focus my attention upon shared desires, a peaceful world of cooperation and goodwill. There is my heartfelt prayer. And our um, Bible verse from today comes from those, comes from Isaiah 26, verse 3. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace, because they trust in you. And we now move into our meditation. So again, let's take that world peace that seeing everyone in oneness as we close our eyes and begin to breathe in. As we breathe in, let us begin by removing anything that's not serving us with every breath. So we take our first deep breath in. We move away from the worry of yesterday. We learn from the past, we take our gifts from the past, but we don't leave ourselves anchored in the past. So by breathing out, we release that worry, 
knowing that it's already done and it will become a tool for us to be better. On our next inhalation, let's begin to think of the things that we are worried about coming tomorrow, that anxiety that's working, that holds us in fear and holds us in determination, not wondering what's happening there, but knowing that the only thing we know is here in the present. And we release that out with our out breath. And with our final cleansing breath, we breathe in, knowing we're breathing in love and the presence that we are in. And we breathe out, centering ourselves, relaxing into this present moment. We continue our breath. We allow the breath to move. And as we take our in-breath, we focus on our in-breath and we focus on our out-breath. We focus on the differences between the two as we allow the outer world to fall away. And we'll do that for the next minute or so. Let us continue to just breathe and focus and notice how the outer world has began to fall apart and let us move our attention to our heart. Let us move our attention to that point which is the Christ consciousness, the seed of the soul and by many names. It is the true essence from where we connect in this oneness. We connect to receive this information where we learn to separate the ego self, that overprotective guardian, and we know how to move into the place of truth. We allow that outer noise to fall away, that noise that tells us how we should live, how it should be. And we have heard from many ministers that we need to stop shooting on ourselves. And we continue to breathe into this moment and every part of our body begins to relax, sinking deeper and deeper into this presence, allowing a wave of warmness to start at the top of our heads and just slowly work its way down through our eyes, through our mouth, through our throat, into our chest and abdomen area out through our arms, feeling tingling in our fingertips as we know that we are fully relaxed. And that warmth continues to go down into our waist, our legs, and even our toes. And we're fully centered into this presence. Today we focus on God. We focus on asking ourselves, what is our understanding of God as we know it now? What is our understanding of good as we know it now? And what it is for us. And we enter into the silence to allow ourselves to take stock of what our thoughts are and to release them into the silence. And then we begin to listen in the silence. So we'll do this for a few moments, but just continue your in and out breath.
as we come back from the silence, we acknowledge that which we have heard. If we didn't get our answers, that's okay. As we move into our lessons, we may hear that small, still voice letting us know where we are at this point and where we could be. We are so grateful for this time together in meditation. As we feel the rush of energy, that warmth of knowing that we are interconnected with everyone watching this video right now. We are interconnected with the people in our house, in our room. We spend time in gratitude, knowing that there is so many gifts out there, so much love out there. And that we are a part of it, if we so choose. We bring our attention back to this time and place, allowing ourselves to stay centered in the present moment. Eckhart Tolle has taught us the power of now. And when we truly understand that, when we truly understand that, we know that we can live a life fully in the present, forgiving the past, excited about the future because we know it unfolds as it should. And we are so grateful. And as we bring our attention even more into the room, we affirm the meditation with an amen, stating that we acknowledge that we are now present with each other. When you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes as we prepare our lesson. So again, welcome to our next lesson. Last week we covered two chapters, the first two chapters in the quest. And again, I encourage you to get the book, not only the quest, but also the adventures in the quest, which is almost like a workbook. And when I do the final word for the day and I give you your homework for assignment to do over the week, that's usually where I grab those exercises from. So you have the book to go ahead and do it. And it is in Kindle form and physical form. So get it you know, really dive into this work because over the next year, we're going to be touching on a lot of unity teachings. And as I said, we are starting over, but we are not learning anything new unless you are new to these teachings or you're new to our channel. And these are the first time you're hearing them. Then of course, this is all new to you. But if you've been down this road, we're just revisiting where it's at. It's kind of like I just finished the book and I'm going back to actually highlight certain things in the book because again i'll be reading it for a second time with new eyes now i read that same book six months from now i'm a new person i've grown so that's the importance of joining in groups and like i said when we talked about friends you know a lot of churches when they do these things they have small study groups where people get together and really dive into this so i encourage you to share these videos with your friends and discuss these topics and i'm always open reach out to me if there's a topic you want to talk about we can get a zoom going and we can further discuss you know the growth in this and today talking about starting over and moving into the presence where we're allowing that the past to be our lessons our gifts we learn to forgive you know we don't stay anchored in the past because it just slows our growth down we let go of the anxiety we have in the future. And you hear this every time I do meditation because a lot of times we, we spend so much time worrying about tomorrow or whatever that we don't stop to sit here and look at what we need, what we already have, who's here to support us, who's here to bless us, who, what is here to help us right now, right here. And because we overlook that, we tend to miss out on some great lessons. We tend to miss out on being able to look at our past and say, you know what, all those things that happened in the past may have seemed like something wrong, but they turn out to be a gift. Again, the, the name of my actual company is with every encounter because of that. I had to learn 
that I had to stop blaming the past. I had to stop blaming the people in my past and start looking at it as lessons. Faith Rivera sings a song called The Gifts of the Storm. Because when we can see the gifts coming through, even when we're in that stormy cloudiness, the dark night of the soul. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that on Wisdom Wednesday. As I said, I'll be touching a little bit about my own journey, internal journey and things like that. And share how these things that I'm learning not only work in the constant, in the context that I'm using it in, but also in everything in our lives. And it doesn't matter, male or female, doesn't matter. We all go through things. And when we don't know what we don't know, we miss out on so much. So I hope you're chewing on, tune in on Wednesday and Wednesday. But now that we're talking about the presence, this presence that we know, and I love the opening statement. She, you know, they go, you know, there's something greater than you. What exactly is this something which we call God? And of course, the chapter I'm talking about is what is God? And I love the biblical verse they choose for us to work with today, which is, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understand and reveal them to the babies. And again, that's Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. And this comes down, especially someone like myself, who's a technician by trade, someone who has worked in computers and always analytical. We tend to overthink things. You know, I don't know how many times when I worked in my old company that I'll be talking to a, you know, a person who's calling in for troubleshooting and I'm going through all the steps and the software and maybe it's deeper into the core of the computer, blah, 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 to find out they just didn't plug in the printer. Because my mind is already creating something that isn't even there. Or it's reaching into the past and finding past problems rather than looking at the now and saying, well, what is happening right now? And that right now is when we are truly in the presence of what we call God. The author of this chapter uses a lot of stories. I do like this story. It is in a tiny Italian village stood the most beautiful church for as long as anyone could remember. People had come from near and far just to see the magnificent fresco called the Holy Family, which was painted on one of its walls. But one unfortunate day during World War II, the village was bombed and part of the famous fresco had, reduced, had been reduced to rubble. After the war, the church was rebuilt with the exception of the one wall, where the beautiful fresco had once been. There now was only little more than half of the work left, sitting side by side with a glaring stretch of new bare plaster. The saddened villagers desperately sought, sought, sought to salvage their treasure. Artists and experts from all over the world were brought into the church in the hopes that they could restore the beloved painting. One by one they tried, but none succeeded. No one could capture the style, the colors of the original. It seems as if the scene had been gone forever. Then one day, a very old man walked through the church door. He said he had heard about the damaged fresco and felt sure that he could restore it. After some time, he managed to persuade the priest to let him try his hand at restoring the pathetic wall for two full days. The man worked in silence. The priest was becoming very uneasy, anxious to see some proof of the man's ability. By the end of the third day, when the priest made his daily inspection of work, he could hardly believe his eyes. A small portion of the missing fresco had been restored to its original beauty. The man was commissioned to complete the work, which he did in a few months. And when he finished, the church bells wildly rang out with the great news and people everywhere streamed into the church. It was the most special day in this tiny village had ever known. A great celebration was held in honor of the artist. Someone asked him how it could be that he could accomplish what so many others could not. He smiled and said, it was I who painted the fresco more than 50 years ago. I created it and now I have restored it. And a lot of times when we look at something like that, we think about that. Whatever our inner divinity is, whether we call it God, Mother, Father, God, Mother, Father, Goddess, it doesn't matter. Whatever that divinity is, is what's holding the truth within ourselves. We have 
our ego we have uh we'll talk about on another wisdom wednesday the overprotective guardian we have the critic within ourselves which is usually influenced by our outer world but once we can get past that and get to that divinity that spark within us that which we say is the god in me then we can begin to restore who we are and restore ourselves to that great divinity that we are when we talked about starting over we talked about the verse where jesus said we must become like children to enter into the kingdom of heaven you know another story he brings up is the one with the elephant where they brought in blind people and everybody who touched the elephant in a different part said this is like a snake this is like a tree trunk this was like something else because we try to fit everything into what we perceive god to be and it is true we begin to understand god as we were taught as someone who was a catholic who was raised catholic for me god was an old man in the sky who had every power to punish me when i wasn't doing right reward me when i was doing right and always looking out for the lightning bolt that's going to hit me just because i had the wrong thought or the wrong action and this is what i grew up with and as i grew up I started to distance myself from that because that wasn't my belief. That was a belief that was instilled in me from a child. But I never took the time to find out for myself. And that's be and when people look at me and we talk and it's like, well, you hear you talk about Buddhism, you talk about the Kabbalah, you know, you talk about, you know, Islam, you talk about that. You talk about all these different religions and yet you're a unity minister. And I said, exactly. I said, that is why I became a unity minister, because there is no one right and there's no one wrong because we all are just coming from an understanding of what God is for us. In fact, the artist Vincent van Gogh believed that the best way to know God is to love many things. You know, we look at the miracles in life, you know, a watermelon, big juicy watermelon, everybody runs out, especially in the summer, you know, picnics, blah, blah, blah. And you see the number of seeds within that watermelon. But when you really think about it, that one black seed contains everything that watermelon needs to become a new watermelon and produce hundreds of seeds within itself all over again. And that's the same thing here when we talk about understanding God is that there are mysteries that we still don't understand. But when we tap into our own divinity, we find that trueness within us. We're not worried about what other people are doing. We're not worried about what social media, what the television, the media itself is doing. You know, I had a mentor in my old business who used to talk, call TV, you know, take away a vision. Or, you know, Michael Bernard Beckwith says that it's called tell a vision for a reason because it's telling you the vision that you need to have for you. And you're missing out on everything, the gifts that you have around you, the people you have around you who truly are there to support you. Trust me, I am glad for, and you may not understand this, but those that know, know, you know, my circle, my family, my tribe, because even in the darkest parts of my life, they have been there. Even when I worried that I couldn't handle something, they have been there. And for me, that is based on the presence of God within them, the good within them, to do that for me. And I try to do that in reverse. And we talk about the wise and understanding is because we, you know, Jesus warned that God is not revealed to the wise and understanding because the wise and understanding, like myself as a technician, we try to define God. I'm sure many of you heard that, you know, men have so much ego that they had to, God created man in his image, and man created God in theirs. Because we try to explain, and because we're afraid of what we don't know. We can't stay in the present moment and say, I see the good that's happening. I see what's going on. Because we're so afraid of what we think is going to happen in the future. Or we're so afraid of what happened in the past that we're missing out on this journey, this presence within ourselves, that beauty within each and every one of you. When we bid namaste, it's because I'm saying I see the divinity in you and I'm honoring that in you. 
When we talk about the attributes of God, we've used so many names. We say God is truth, love, good, higher power, universal mind, peace, spirit, substance, creator, the presence, father, mother, father, mother, father, mother, divine mind. And that's only a few of them. There are hundreds of names out there that people will call them. But we believe them as one presence, one power in this universe, God the good. And this is the very heart of the quest. This is the very heart of unity. This is what was taught to us by the co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. It is where we bring ourselves and our beliefs knowing that God is good. And even if we took that in the literal sense and say the word God was just derived from the word good, it is the good within ourselves that we can get past that negative thinking from outside and know that we are enough. Self-care has to come from a place of good from within ourselves because we take on so much. And not only do we take on so much, being our own worst critics because we don't tap into that good, to that God within ourselves. We are not even grateful for ourselves. We talk about forgiveness work and I talked about making a list of the top 10 people you had to forgive and then I asked if how many people put that, their own names on that list, only 50% of them raised their hand. And then I re-asked the question, how many of you put your name first? And there wasn't a hand up. Because we forget that that's that divinity within ourselves. It is the work we do within ourselves that allows us to do the work outside of us. And sometimes we don't even have to do anything because people can see it in us. If we embrace the fact that everything is a part of God, then we must admit that we are all part of God. We are all one with God, one with each other, and there can be no quarrels, no conflict, no wars among people who truly understand that oneness. I suffered from anger years ago. And even though I may get twinges now, I now understand better that in empathy, that I can put myself in a person's shoes and say, okay, I understand what's going on. And even if I don't understand, I can still stand in that person's shoes. There's no reason to be angry, to quarrel, to argue, whatever. It is all from a place of love. And I'm not talking about the emotion of love. And when I say that that definition transcends all religions, you know, one of my... Um, spiritual advisors right now asked me to read a book which was highly traditional christian and even that sentiment is in there it says it's not the emotion but the power of it one of our 12 innate powers taught to us by charles fillmore god is also omnipotent all-powerful this is another aspect of god yet even more than that all being all-powerful god is omnipotence all power the only power there is and the power of good. And I was taught this early on in unity because we tend to hear, you know, there is one power, one presence, God, the good, omnipotent, omnipotence. We, for, we forget that we try to limit it by saying he is all, you know, powerful by labeling him or, you know, I'm using the traditional terms and the pronouns, but in reality, God is principle. And we try to label that principle by limiting it by saying he's all powerful. Whereas in reality, God principle is all power, is all presence. It's all love. It's all we're not limiting or labeling. We just understand that this presence can contain so much within it. God does not only have these attributes. God does not only possess these attributes. Rather, God is omnipresence. God is omnipotence. And God is omniscience. So again, it's no longer limiting what we believe is God by trying to label it. Again, I made the mistake of using the pronoun because that's what I was used to from a Catholic background. So author here labels and says omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience, one God, one God, 
and that God is all and that God is good. So when we begin to understand that, that we're no longer looking for the pie in the sky, the guy sitting in the chair, we're looking at a, a presence that's all around us that transcends all religions. It is the one thing we're all speaking about and we're all seeking at the same time. One of the things that in unity we tend to throw around is the word divine order. It says God's power is within you, available at all times to help you to bring more good into your life. It is the nature of God to create perfection and to continually make new. Once you accept this basic truth, be prepared for things to get better. It could be that all God wants from us is the awareness of this presence. This simple awareness opens the way for God to be active in our lives. That means some major transformations are about to take place. So when we talk about divine order, and we're probably going to talk a lot more about that when we get to that section of the book. We talk about that which comes through us and we express through our Christ consciousness into the world through what would be known as the Holy Spirit or that part of us. The idea becomes expression. But again, when we don't allow ourselves to tap into that God self, that love within ourselves, when we don't do the work of forgiveness and we don't do the work of building ourselves up in confidence, knowing who we truly are in this divinity, this allows for all those voices around us to temper into that. And when we do receive that idea and it becomes filtered through our heart, or as Johnny, Dr. Johnny Coleman said, the heart representing our subconscious, which has been programmed for years and years and years and years by everything around us, divine order no longer happens. What we have is an expression of our fear, expression of our lack, expression of whatever, because we're so afraid of what might happen. We're so afraid of what has happened that we no longer give ourselves the gift of knowing that this presence can be a present. We need to know God as ourselves. It not must become a personal God. We must know who this presence is for us. I've talked about this. I had someone in my life who used to say that when he prayed to God, he saw God as Morgan Freeman. And for those who don't know Bruce Almighty, the movie with um, Jim Carrey, Morgan Freeman plays God. And he said he used to see Morgan Freeman as a bobblehead. And every time he asked a question, if he bobbled his head up and down, he took it as a yes and back and forth. Is he wrong? No. That's how he was able to see God within himself to help himself move forward. And he trusted in that intuition. You know, and we use the word God present. So when people are like, well, what about atheists? And I say, well, do atheists believe in their gut, their intuition? Well, it's coming from somewhere. There are people who don't even, and talk about the Akashic records, where the records are supposedly of everything, every, all knowledge is out there, and all we have to do is tap into that. Could we call that God? It must become personal for ourselves to be able to work this, to truly know who we are. It is not always easy to come from a loving place. Because we're bombarded with what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. And that I'll talk a lot more about on Wednesday. Because that was the biggest mistake in life for me. Is I allowed the voices outside of me to tell me who I should be. And it wasn't only in one place in my life. It was in a lot of places in my life. And when I finally came to realize that I had to tap into the God in me. I had to tap into the good in me and tap into working with that good, doing the work, which is why when I come with the final word, I implore you to do the work this way, is when I truly started to make strides in my life and to feel good about myself. And in feeling good about myself, I can now minister to others and I can be a better person for my family. I can be a better person for any of my friends. I can be a better minister for those who need me to minister. And that excites me now because I now know what I didn't know. But that will continue to unfold as what I don't know, I don't know, and it will continue to help. So 
what I can tell you before I end this lesson is return back to the mind of a child. Be inquisitive. Work with it. Be, don't be afraid of the past. Kids, children are quick to forgive. And look at what you're receiving in this present moment. And don't worry about tomorrow. Because if it changes tomorrow, so be it. But enjoy what you're getting today and who you are today. And know that it is for you to be able to give the gift. You must be the best you you can be. And that comes from the work we do inside. Not talking about it, but doing the work. And I will see you in the final word. To the final word here, I want you to remember the most important thing here is to do the work. It's easy to talk about it. It's easy to make excuses. You know, it's easy to do things to stop us from doing it and then claim that life sucks. Well, guess what? I learned a long time ago that my life is based on the choices I make and the work I do. And trust me when I tell you that I am one of those people that are always in my head and I tend to worry about the things that happened in the past and try to worry about the things that are, may happen in the future and create stories of things that may happen rather than be grateful for what's going on right now in my life and know that it is all is well and will unfold as it should. I love that John Buchanan in our uh, Adventures book says, an atheist is a man who has no invisible means of support. Where in reality, as I said earlier, to me, an atheist is just a person who taps more into his own intuition, his own gut. He may not believe in higher power. He may believe this is all it is, but there's something inside of him that helps him make that decision. So just as an example, when we try to do the exercises to identify God for ourselves, if I sat here and said, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, Look up in the, sky, it's a, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's, and you would know that Superman. Well, we know that when we try to define God for ourselves, it is not that easy. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Buddhist, it doesn't matter whether you're a traditional Christian or any type of Christian. If you're Jewish, if you're Muslim, or any of the religions out there. There is still this presence and this power that interlock all of us together, no matter what our beliefs are. And if we take the time to divine God for us, we can begin to see the beauty in all of those religions that help us. So what can we do today? Well, first of all, I want you to pick up this mantra. God is at work in my life. And repeat that to yourself till you feel yourself in that present moment. And that's what we're doing. So it is a mantra. God is at work in my life. It's an affirmation if you want to call it that. But when you repeat that to yourselves, whether it's in prayer time, meditation time, or just repeat it to yourself, you're bringing yourself to the present moment, allowing yourself to let go, let go, and be here right now to do the work. So when we look at knowing what this presence is, Begin to ask yourself, what has been your single most profound experience of God at work in your life? And if you feel like you've never had a profound God experience, write about someone you know or someone who's told you stories about how God has worked in their lives. I've shared many of my own. If you were at Unity of NEPA, Reverend Diana shared a lot of her own. And I'm sure you've heard from other people where something spontaneous or call it synchronicity just happened. And think about that. Then take some time and ask yourselves, when do you usually feel closest to God? Is it when you're in a church or temple, when you pray, when you see a sunset, when you hear special music? For me, it is usually when I'm in my time of meditation and prayer that I feel the closest and I try to hold on to that feeling throughout the day. So when doubts and fears and things are being thrown at me, I can remain in that place of love. 
ask yourself the same question, but now in reverse. When do you usually feel furthest from God? And it's usually when I'm out of sync with love. When there's a part of me that wants to lash out or there's a part of me that wants to be angry for no reason. And there's that part of me is when I feel furthest from God and I take that moment to center in. And again, these are my answers. I want you to discover them for yourselves and journal it. And what three words spontaneously come to mind when you think of God? Another thing is, so here are two quotes. One is from Thomas Carlyle that says, the universe is but one vast symbol of God. And again, Vincent van Gogh's quote, the best way to know God is to love many things. So I want you to go ahead and choose one of those two. And you can replay the video if you need, if you didn't hear them correctly. And explain how those mean, what they mean to you. So again, for me, the best way to know God is to love many things. To me, it's not about loving many things, but to be in the presence or in the power of love with everything you interact with. No matter how your mind may think it's making you feel, no matter how the situation may look in your perspective, stay in that place of love and you can love everything. It's scary, but it's worth it. And then finally, list three things which you are you are that is evidence of god in your world so again this is us looking for that good that god within ourselves and next week we will join each other in what am i and we begin to look at who we are in this thing so do the work replay the video on youtube to get the questions as always, I'm grateful for you being here. I am truly thankful for you. If you wish to help contribute to our ministry as we continue to build uh, our online ministry and see where it takes us in the future, you can always donate here at YouTube. You can go to the top. You'll see a donate button or go to the About Us page. We still, we still have the website up, which is weesc.org. It has not been updated as I am re-evaluating my time and um so it you could still go there there is a donate button that you can do through paypal there and of course support your local unities that you may attend outside of listening to this and help them build because we're all trying to do the good work to help us all realize the god within and to use that gift to help the people around us but it has to start with me and it has to start with you so we are grateful for those that have donated. And it doesn't matter the amount. It has helped us get to where we are now. And I am grateful for you donating your time and presence here with me today, whether it's live or when you watch the videos later. So as always, I love you. Nothing you can do about it. And as we end today with the prayer of protection, as we say the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. And wherever we are, God is, because we are God's greatest expression. And all is well. And we are so grateful. And I will see you on Wisdom Wednesday or next Sunday.